Let me ask you something. Do you like the ARP9 or the PCC9 that G&G put out? It's safe to say that both of these have been really popular in the airsoft community. But let's just say you don't like 9mm M4s. Maybe you think they're overrated or too mainstream. That's fine, but how about something different then? It's still a pistol caliber carbine, but this time it's modeled after a 45 that that's been flying off the shelves in the real world. This is a replica of something the Flannel Dad himself had to beg LWRC to get. Yeah, G&G Armament went there. Introducing the minty fresh new SMG that's not an MP5 or a UMP45. This is the PCC45. And I'm freaking excited to have one to show off. I even want to see if G&G would want to do a giveaway with one of these. More on that later, but I already have nearly a dozen other replicas to review. However, I wasn't going to just say no to the opportunity to make this gun's existence known. Okay, so what is this thing? For some people, it's the Striker 45 from Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and to a few other people, it's the UMP 45. But in the real world, this would be the LWRC SMG 45. Funny enough, the real thing that was meant to gain military contracts, that's now gaining interest with police forces and civilian shooters, uses h &K UMP magazines, but that's the real thing. This is the airsoft version. So why do I like this SMG so much? Apart from the gorgeous looks, this AEG has a few great features and standout quirks. This isn't a Doug DeMero review, but let me show you what I mean. Want to connect a battery, but fear having to use those tiny little batteries to fit inside the receiver? Don't worry about it. First flip down this lever and pull forward on the aluminum M-Lock handguard. And there's your battery trough. G&G made the most of the space around the barrel assembly, and I'm happy they did, since replacing a battery this way is fast and very easy to do if you use 11.1 .1 candy bar lipos or even 7.4s. I just wish they would have added Dean's connections, especially for a replica at the price point of $280 to $300. Now, to be honest, I imagine that this setup would have been really shaky and wobbly, but the lever setup and flat spring combo keep this rail rock solid. The surprises continue to the receiver that's not made of the same aluminum as the rail, but is actually made of a really high quality polymer. It's that same polymer seen on the ARP9s and the Gen 2 combat machines, and you might notice a few parts reused from those replicas on the PCC45, like the super slim down pistol grip, the metal flat trigger, and even the aluminum and steel flip up sights. I like that everything is ambidextrous, from the AK style paddle magazine release, the bolt release, and the fire selector. And skipping around to the steel sling points, which are a great addition. They're big, they can be unscrewed and swapped to either side of the PCC45, and anyone should be able to use them effectively. Three things I like to mention though. You do get the same G2 version 2 gearbox that G&G keeps trying to improve on more and more, with the quick release spring guide hidden just behind the stock's mount. Just undo these two screws, and there you go. Number two, the 110 round limit to the in my opinion, nice looking mid cap magazine can be crippling. Actually looking at it again close up, the fake 45 ACP inserts look a little funny. These mags aren't as thick as an M4 magazine, so I get that the spring can't curl around as easily. So if you're a little more trigger happy, then keep the magazine's limitations in mind. The extended follower is nice though. I always like seeing that. I even think that this should be a standard feature moving forward. And three. I mentioned this in just about any review, overview, unboxing, and so on, but can we please get the correct all black flash hiders, muzzle brakes, or thread protectors in the box? It doesn't need to be attached, but just having it in a baggie or something would be a really nice touch that wouldn't cost much at all. And stop with the solid pin that holds the stock flash hider in. I'm not sure if this is out of G&G's hands or not, but I hate these. I don't have a drill, so I can't take this out by myself but if it was just an Allen screw, then it wouldn't be a problem. I can heat up glue and break that really easily, but please just make a few changes to the formula. I don't think it would be too hard. I know that some people just break these off completely, but do we seriously need to just put up with that? But besides all that, this PCC45 or SMG45 still has a couple great features. The finger rests on both sides, I love them. The rubber butt pad and cheek rest on this UMP45 style folding stock, comfy. I love the steel and aluminum charging handle a lot, and the rotary hop-up that we all love can be found in here. 
G&G just made a good choice of replicating this SMG. It looks futuristic, but it feels so good in the hands. I know I won't be able to attach something like a foregrip, since that lever mechanism kind of gets in the way of things, but you can make this SMG45 look pretty delicious with just a few add-ons. This could make for a nice primary for police kits, counterterrorism loadouts, or maybe even with special forces stuff if you want to shake things up a bit. Markings are subtle besides the white 45 ACP mark on the mock bolt. Reloads are effortless with the flared magwell. I just like a lot of stuff about this gun. I need to take it out to the range or just play a few games with the single magazine I've got to really test it out, but let me tell you this. I really hope that this new release doesn't fail me. I want to like this SMG since it just fits me so well. You ever just pick up a gun and know immediately that you have to have it? That's this gun. I want to trick this thing out, get a bunch of mags for it, and confuse people when I say it's not a UMP. All the features of the fourth generation MOSFET and the ETU inside will help make trigger responses crisp and spammable, and I'll probably run this SMG with full auto switch to three round burst. I really need to look this thing over a few more times, play with it a bit, open it up, and hand it over to a bunch of people to get their opinions, because I need to be as non-biased as possible with my videos. It's obvious that I like this PCC, but I can't ignore faults that other people might find, and I wouldn't advise anyone else doing airsoft videos to do so. Everything has faults, cons, shortcomings, and if I'd want to know what they are, then I'm sure that you'd want to know too before making any purchases, especially a $300 purchase. So I'll take my time and write as many notes as I can and do a lot of tests. Like, I want to know if I can use normal UMP45 magazines with this or not. I like variety, so if I can get a few UMP mags that this PCC will run, then that would just be another bonus. Oh, and if this video breaks 2,000 likes, then I'll see if G&G would be cool with me giving away a PCC45. Just putting that out there. But after all this, if you still don't like the G&G PCC45, then tell me why. Is it the magazines, the UMP stock, or the large profile of it? I really want to know because that helps me put together a more thorough review later. Questions do the same, since I'll know what I should cover later or what I should answer in the comments now. GNG Armin is very much appreciated for sending me this PCC45 as early as they did, and to show it, I'll make sure to link their website down below. I'll even add links to where you can get one of these for yourself when they become more available on the market. Expect them to become in stock in your favorite stores, hopefully within a month or two in the United States. You'll find a link to Bohemia's overview of this PCC45 in the description as well. Go watch that video to get more info, or just for more glamour shots if you need some eye candy. I also need to show my gratitude to the US Airsoft channel members like Sid, Sam Elliott, The Sybil, Aiden Duwell, Kiwi Spartan, and everyone else you see on your screen now for directly supporting the channel by simply being members. I've got something in store for the US Airsoft channel members when we break 250,000 subscribers, and you can join them by hitting this button on the US Airsoft homepage. That way you can get exclusive perks that only members can enjoy. If not, then why not just hit the like button to help this video get some more traction. Oh, and stick around for some extra footage of the G&G PCC45 at the chronograph being tested at the range or just being shot at the end. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time. Oh. That's pretty, that's pretty nice. Let's see, uh, go on here. And then, okay. Yeah, I like it, man, I dig it. It's actually really snappy. And uh, it's actually not that heavy. Like, once you start running, you kind of forget about it. Yeah, man. And I think for the SMGs, you get more real estate because this will definitely fit too in, uh, tuned with like an AK mag or something and super clean super snappy yeah so uh, we fired it it's actually pretty snappy um, even with twos I thought they were 28s uh, once adjusted the hop-up it actually really really snappy and the actual bolt lock actually locks and then pretty nice I actually really like the size the feel it's really it's a really really solid uh, and then the, the mags themselves really really nice to just clip in yeah I'm, I'm totally digging it. Anything I, you're not really into? Um, the only thing, I mean, the, uh, um, actually no, I really like it all.
Okay, so I'm not the only one that's like maybe lightly overhyping it. No, it's actually really nice for for being small and uh, for being for being actually going pretty far. I, I dig it. I would definitely run this. Yeah. If you're wondering why I took off my glasses, it's just because it's so bright out here that I've got so much glare in my eyes that I might as well just take them off. But we all know about the MOSFETs inside of a lot of these G&Gs that you can actually set the full auto switch to three on burst. And all you have to do is shoot once, hold the trigger down in semi, and just wait for a little beep after 10 seconds. I don't know if you could hear that on camera, but it just beeped, which means that three round burst is now our next selection. Avert your eyes now if you don't like seeing trigger spam, but I know someone would ask about this in the comments, so here we go. It's pretty freaking good. But of course, be aware that you will feel the heat from your motor pretty quickly, especially with this ultra-thin pistol grip on it.